So the next thing to be taken to bits is this rather fetching cup warmer from China and unlike the USB ones, I'm thinking this is probably going to have some more gutsy power to it. It's going to actually be able to warm things. I suddenly realised, I think that's a metal plate. I thought, I thought it was all plastic. I think this might actually be a metal disc. So I'm um, measuring the resistance across it. I wondered initially if this was going to just be a fixed resistor inside, but if you measure the resistance across it, it shows a resistance of about, oh, almost 1,000 ohms. Okay, so let's uh, do the maths then. If it was 1,000 ohms, um, the current that would flow through it would be 240 volts, uh, I equals V over R, so 240 volts divided by the 1,000 ohms would be 240 milliamps, and the power dissipated would be uh, current times voltage, so that's 240 milliamps times 240 volts would dissipate about 60 watts. So um, that's quite a lot. It, it must be a positive temperature coefficient thermistor in here. One, a resistive element that basically changes its resistance. Its resistance increases as it gets hotter, so it self-regulates. And the way to find that out is to uh, plug it in. So let's bring in the power meter, plug in the fetching black and purple death adapter, um, and we'll plug this in and we'll watch the power, what actually happens. So I'll turn this off at the switch, plug it in, ready. So it shoots up 55 watts, 38, 26, that is self-regulating. And it's coming down to about 10 watts. It's getting warm. Technically speaking, I'm watching this uh, power go up as I put my hand in it and take the heat away. So the whatever's on it, the more it takes the heat away, it's going to uh, increase the power to actually compensate for that. Okay. And if I take my hand off, it should, the power should go down as it as it reaches an equilib an equilibrium heat, a sort of balance. Okay. Right here. Enough. Let's open it. So it's got uh, little feet that usually hide uh, screws. I know that it'll clip together, but I'm thinking there may be screws under here. Yes, there are screws under there. Let's stick the feet there just to actually keep them in a findable place. It's nice that it's got a little uh, neon indicator on the switch as well. And holes in the bottom to let the smoke out. Okay, that's kind of destructive taking the feet out. They're not that clear and coming out, they probably won't go in too well. One screw out. Oh, the case is already trying to open itself. It seems quite springy. I wonder if there's a spring actually holding the PTC element onto the heater plate. We shall find out in due course. Right. So, um, the top comes off and this plate. Ooh, blimey. Oh, that's unusual. So th there's a stone here with a piece of uh, insulating mica between it and the... Oh, that's mainly because it is ele electrically directly... This is metal. Um, in fact, it's steel. Yes, it is. Let me demonstrate. Magnet. Yes, it's steel. So a little steel disc, and it's got a mica insulating plate, and then it's got this rather interesting uh, ceramic thing. Let's uh, see if we can open that up. Oh, and inside is the typical arrangement of a slab of the... Uh, PTC material, the positive temperature coefficient material, and this really is just to hold that. It's got the bottom electrode here, and then it's got the top electrode that just sandwiches down onto that. I'll just show you those, the bottom electrode in there, uh, and the top electrode, so that technically speaking that top bit is live, hence why it needs this mica plate. I suppose there must be a slight cu capacitive coupling of uh, through that onto the um, top plate. Is this going to go back together? 
Oh, it does kind of rely on the springiness of the metal and uh, just pressing that down, foaming it to actually grip that. Is it electrically safe now? Who knows? So, um, yeah, it's just basically that's it. It's a PTC element um, coupling through this uh, mica onto the metal plate. So it will basically just self-regulate and keep this metal disc at a modest temperature. Um, I may actually test that. I may see what its equilibrium temperature is. One moment, please. OK, well, I've stuck a bit of tape on the PTC device to see what temperature it's, it natively comes up to without a, a thermal load in it like this plate. And uh, if I use the thermal imaging camera on that, it shows it's about 211 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot, actually. Um, which suggests a sort of ambientish, an average, you know, um, temperature of that device of about 200 degrees Celsius. I did try black insulation tape at first. When you've got a shiny surface like this, you have to use uh, tape in it to uh, increase its emiss emissivity, its, its ability to actually be seen by the camera. The camera tends to not see a shiny surface that well. And the black tape just basically went on fire, basically. It just went all gooey and sticky and started emitting smoke, so uh, not so great. Uh, I am going to, even now that the... the residue of the adhesive underneath it is uh, is starting to whiff. So I'm going to put this together again um, and then I'm going to test the temperature again. But I've discovered something I do not like. That gets pretty hot and the flex, the cable, the two core cable, this is unplugged by the way, passes underneath that heat element and then comes back round goes into the switch. I don't like that. So I'm going to lift this off gingerly because it's going to be red hot and I'm going to reroute that cable. Um, I see there is a sort of channel there, as if it's kind of like designed to go there, but I think, to be honest, I'd rather that went over there. Um, so it was just absolutely nowhere near that hot surface. So uh, is this cooled down to the point I could touch it yet? It has, more or less. Um, so that's interesting. I wonder what temperature... Th this must be high-temperature plastic, I'm guessing, to deal with that, but 200 Celsius is pretty damn hot. Um, although it would take a while for it to build up through that uh, ceramic material and there is airflow under it and that will be the physically the, the uh, temperature of the um, PTC element. So I'm going to put it together now and I'm going to measure the temperature again after it's been sitting for a while. OK, that's it back together. I will say there's a slight bulge upwards in this because it is applying modest pressure. I shouldn't touch that too much because the temperature in the middle, and it's got fairly good emissivity, uh, is actually about... Let's bring this up. Uh, 117 degrees Celsius in the middle. It's sort of, it's a sort of hot spot. I should actually, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting. This is automatic. This is homing in in the hottest spot, but it graduates outwards from that. So, but the peak in the middle is open in open air. It's about that sort of 120-ish mark there. Um, as soon as you put a cup in that, though, it would pull it down. But do keep in mind that this is actually enough to actually burn you if you put your hand on it. Um, I'm kind of glad I relocated that cable away from the underneath that thing. So it's an interesting device. I'm going to have to try it with a cuppa on it and see, you know, how it fares over time. I don't think it will keep. I don't think it will like keep your drink, you know, up at full on like just poured sort of temperature. But I think it would uh, do a good job of just keeping the chill off it and keeping it uh, warm. It must have other uses as well. I wonder how good it would be for sort of melting wax and stuff like that. So I'm going to have a play around with this and uh, anything I discover I shall leave in the description down below. So I decided to test the unit, you know, as it would be used and I made a cup of hot water as if I was making a cup of coffee and then I put it in the explosion containment pie dish and I was out at the gym and shopping and stuff like that. So I've been away for about three hours or so. And the temperature is stabilised, well the, the temperature, the power is stabilised at roughly about 7.5 watts thereabouts. And the temperature, you can tell it's slightly different than normal temperature, but let's bring in the, uh, the thermocouple and test it properly. So the ambient temperature in here is miserable. It's uh, round about the sort of 10 degrees Celsius mark, which is fine for me, but not fine for ordinary mortals. Um, and uh, I'll just stick it in and we'll see what it is over. So 10, it's raised it by 15 degrees Celsius. So if it was in a room that was at 20 degrees Celsius, it would probably be 35 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure... That still sounds pretty cold to me. That sounds like body temperature at best. And certainly drinking this hmm, 
it's uh, not really much off Stone Cold. So, um, perhaps not ideal as a, as a cup heater. However, there must be other applications, you know. It, it seems quite an, a nice idea as a very hot heated surface, a nice bright hot spot in the middle of it. Uh, things to check though when you get it, the routing of that cable inside is a bit shady going underneath such a high temperature uh, component. And also, someone mentioned they had one of these and uh, they got a zap off it. I wonder if perhaps in there is that sheet of insulation is missing that, because that's quite important, that piece of uh, mica. Uh, it's the bit that insulates you from the mains connection inside, but uh, from this metal cover. I mean, the lacquer, the paint's going to have some effect, but not that much. So, um... It's an interesting device. It has its possibilities, certainly for components or adaptation or maybe other other applications. But uh, I'm not convinced it's a great uh, cup warmer. It's not going to have a huge effect. <laughs>